sick of me by the end of these nine weeks. No, I hope not. Um, section two of unit two, part two. I like to break them up for you guys because I think if you saw that one of my lessons was like 30 to 40 minutes long, you might be like, skip over. No, more importantly, um, some of you guys may get some of these concepts so then you don't have to watch the entire thing. I give you a descriptive kind of little bit about what I talk about so that you guys can pick and choose what you wanna watch and what you don't understand, what you need more help with. So in this part, we're gonna talk more about the stages of photosynthesis, okay? In your text, in your lesson, I'm going to tell you guys this right now, and I'll tell you this probably a couple times throughout um, first semester biology and second semester when I have you again next semester. Your text tends to go into incredible detail. And to be honest, number one, I'm not gonna test you on all those details. So I really want you to understand that what I'm telling you guys in these lessons are pretty much what I want you to know and um, get to know for the unit exam. Some of the stuff in your lesson goes into so much detail and some of those um, pictures that you might see when it comes to the first and second stage or the two stages um, of photosynthesis, you're gonna be like, oh, what on earth is that talking about? So I don't wanna necessarily have you skip over it, but at the same time, if you can watch this recording and you have an understanding of what I'm saying, that's what I'd like to see. So let's go into the stages. La la la. There are two in photosynthesis. Now it does talk about kind of three stages on one of your um, pages in your lesson. I don't want you to get confused because um, really there are two main stages that we're gonna talk about, but they kind of break it up. And I'll show you a picture in a second that'll help you understand why it talks about three in one particular area. But the two main stages are the light dependent process or notice how it's light Ooh, color coordinated lovely light reactions okay so we're going to call them light reactions light dependent i wonder what that means right like maybe it needs light to occur yes it is dependent upon light so those are the light reactions the second stage is the light independent process or the dark reactions it's very clever right no, not really. So um, hopefully you guys can figure that out. If it's independent of light, it doesn't need it. It's the dark reactions. If it needs it, it's the light reactions. So pretty simple so far. So stage one, light reactions. We're gonna talk a little bit about that. Um, I'm gonna show you a couple of videos that might go way over your head. But again, you know, couple this with your lesson, reading through it, Maybe you wanna watch this one more time. Let it sink in a little bit. There's a lot of details when it comes to this. You guys, I, I want you guys to understand the complexity of yourselves and plants and organisms and ultimately when we bring it down to a cellular level, how much goes on in our cells. It's mind boggling. That's why I love teaching about, especially the human body, because it's so amazing what goes on. So again, back to um, in plant cells, what is going on there? So again, where does photosynthesis take place? Hmm? Okay, hopefully you guys all said the chloroplast, but more importantly, the light is gathered from the chlorophylls, which is um, the light, the pigment basically that you know we see, and it's gathering that light. So in the thylakoid is where the actual photosynthesis takes place, okay? Oops, hold on, go back, go back, go back. So um, let's move this down a little bit so you guys can actually see that. Okay, so in the first stage, it uses light to energize the energy carrier molecules, ATP and NADPH. You're gonna get kind of overwhelmed with all of these little molecules you're gonna hear and you're gonna see, okay? But uh, again, hold, hold tight, I've got a good picture that actually is the same picture you'll see in your lesson, so that'll be helpful. But I'm gonna explain what exactly happens. Remember we talked about ATP in the last section. It's that high energy molecule that carries a lot of energy in that phosphate bond, especially that last phosphate bond. ATP, adenosine triphosphate, so there's actually three phosphate bonds, okay? Remember if you break off that last phosphate, you actually are releasing energy and you end up with ADP, adenosine diphosphate, okay? So basically, Within the first stage, remember it's the light dependent reactions or the light reactions, 
we're using light here to energize these carrier molecules. So basically you maybe have had, and, and again you'll see this picture, it'll make a little bit more sense, but you had ADP and you had NADP plus without a hydrogen. Those are lower energy molecules, okay? Well light within the chlorophyll and in the chloroplast through this first stage is going to energize these and turn them into ATP and NADPH. These are high energy now. They're like bouncing all, of, all over the place and there's so much energy, kind of like sometimes I feel like I have, which is kind of good. But ultimately also the splitting of water during the first stage gives us oxygen as a waste product. So remember when I take you back to that um, overall chemical equation of photosynthesis, we're starting off with water okay and co2 okay but um, you're getting oxygen as a waste product which isn't a waste to us we need it right so that's ultimately what's happening in the light reactions okay let's go on to the dark reactions but we'll come back to both of them okay the dark reactions ATP and NADPH molecules provide the energy needed to form the carbon carbon covalent bonds of the carbohydrate guess what carbohydrate we're talking about Think of the equation. In photosynthesis, what happens after the arrow? We make glucose, right? Not we, well not we, we don't do photosynthesis. Plants make glucose, okay? So in the dark reactions, which don't need light, okay? We've now gotten the light. The light has energized those ADP and NADPH plus into ATP and NADPH. And now, these molecules are gonna provide the energy needed to form that carbohydrate known as glucose, okay? So, let's keep going. So here's the picture, and we're gonna to get to it in a second. Let me read you these first. The chemical reactions of the light-dependent process occur in the grana. Very important. You need to know where these occur. Now remember, we talked about in part one, so if you don't remember the chloroplast, chloroplast go back to that and, and see that um, actual picture of the chloroplast and where the grana is. The grana are the stacks of pancakes, green pancakes, okay? The reactions of the light independent processes, so the dark reactions, take place in the stroma. The stroma was basically all the area surrounding all those grana and all the thylakoids, okay? So basically, they are taking place in different places. Um, obviously, in the grana, where all of those chlorophyll are, that's where that light-dependent processes are going to take place. Where the dark reactions don't need light, so it's not taking place where the chlorophyll are. It's taking place in the stroma. <sighs> okay, now this um, picture you will see in your text. And it's a very good picture because it's very simplistic and this is what I want you to understand. So here is where it's talking about the three stages. Don't get confused. But ultimately, you have the two main stages, which are the light-dependent and the light-independent. But here, it's talking about different stages more kind of on a detailed basis. So stage one, the light energy is captured by the chlorophyll and the thylakoids, okay? Remember, you're giving water. Water is part of that first part of the equation of photosynthesis, but you're going to get oxygen as kind of a byproduct, okay? You're getting sunlight and it's going into those chlorophyll. And remember, chlorophyll can take that sunlight and change it into actual chemical energy. Very amazing, okay? Stage two, the light energy is converted to ATP and NADPH. So basically, through that light energy, we're taking ADP and making it a high energy molecule, okay? Same with NADP+, which is another just basically carrier for energy. I want you guys to know that these are, these are molecules, you're going to hear NA, ATP a lot, but NADPH is similar to ATP. Obviously, it's a different molecule, but it carries energy, okay? So that's the big thing, kind of part of the light reactions are these two, okay? These two stages, or these two make up kind of what happens with the light dependent. Um, but ultimately, understand that ADP is basically being turned into this high energy ATP. We're adding a phosphate, and we're adding a hydrogen here, okay? So that now you have two high energy molecules. Stage three is the dark reactions, okay? Energy storing organic molecules produced in the Calvin cycle. When I talk about the dark reactions, you're gonna hear me kind of intertwining the Calvin cycle. That is another name for your dark reactions, okay? So don't get confused when you hear that often. So in the dark reactions, now you're giving off that energy. Remember ATP, high energy, NADPH, high energy? We need that energy in order to create that glucose, right? 
So we're going to break off that phosphate and it's, you're going to see it's going to go into this Calvin cycle, which is um, a pretty extensive cycle we'll talk a little bit more about. Um, but ultimately then you're giving off that energy and with the help of CO2, you are creating, not you, why do I keep saying you? Plants are creating um, that glucose molecule, okay? So let me go over to this part. So hopefully that made a little bit more sense. So when you see that in your lesson, you'll be like, aha, light bulb. Um, but here, let's start off with the light reactions. Sunlight comes into those grana, which are the green pancake, um, and into the thylakoid. When you add water, you're gonna have those light reactions that give off your O2. That's one of the byproducts of photosynthesis, okay? So if you, as you guys can see, ADP and NADPH plus are basically coming out from the Calvin cycle. This is a constant cycle that happens, by the way. So ADP and NADPH are basically kind of part of those light, light um, dependent reactions. And through this process, we are energizing those two. So here are our energized molecules, right? They go into the Calvin cycle, which is the dark reactions in which lots of stuff takes place. Okay, we'll go into that a little further, but um, again, I want you to know the main concept of this. But you have that basically these two that go in here and create your glucose molecule. And once they give off their energy, they become ADP and NADPH, and the same thing happens again. Wham, bam, boom. Wham, bam, boom. Okay, and here is your organic molecule, which is your glucose. And CO2 is again something that needs to go into the Calvin cycle. Okay, so that's remember when we talk about the formula for photosynthesis H2O plus CO2 gives you O2 plus your um, glucose molecule okay so here are your reactants here are your products and here's what happens in between lots of stuff okay I hope that all helps kind of solidify some things when you go through that again in your lesson all right so how about more on light reactions um, here's a video that may be a little too much for you but start to let it sink in. There's a lot of molecules and a lot of different names that are thrown around. So um, it's pretty short, but everything will start to make sense. Thinking, thinking. Come on, video. If it doesn't pull up, I will actually give you the link um, next to where you click to watch this video. So, yep. Ah, oh, blast! YouTube, I tell you. Okay, let's um, let's move on. Um, I'm gonna let me try once more and see if I can get it to go, but most likely no, because you know YouTube can be kind of finicky. Okay, I'm gonna give you guys that link underneath where you are clicking here, because this again will give you a little bit more um, of kind of visuals of what's happening. And it is a good video, but it does kind of talk about some things that are a little, might be a little too complex, but nonetheless, you guys can handle it. I know you can. So, so much to comprehend, I know, I know. Just give it time, give it time. Okay, we're back. Guess what we're back to? Since we went over the light reactions one more time, we're going over the dark reactions one more time. So, hopefully this video works. The Calvin cycle is a series of reactions that results in conversion of carbon dioxide into the organic molecules needed to build new cells. It occurs in the stroma, which is the area of the chloroplast surrounding the thylakoid membrane. During the Calvin cycle, carbon dioxide, CO2, is added to a five carbon molecule called RUBP. The resulting six carbon molecule is unstable and quickly splits into two three carbon molecules called three phosphoglycerate. Using energy from ATP and reducing power from NADPH, which are products of the light reactions, the pair of three phosphoglycerates move through a series of reactions and are converted into two molecules of glyceraldehyde three phosphate. When several of these glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate molecules have been produced, some combine to make glucose, while others are reused in the Calvin cycle. 
To generate an entire new glucose molecule, the cycle has to turn several times, because each turn of the cycle adds only one carbon atom from each molecule of carbon dioxide. Okay, there we have it. Um, now that's actually simplified quite a bit. The Calvin cycle, there's a lot that goes into it. There's a lot of different molecules that make up that Calvin cycle. I want you guys to read through that. And when the live session, we're going to go over that a little bit more. I'm going to have more of an interactive um, kind of a website that we're going to go through. And I will explain that Calvin cycle a little bit more in depth. But ultimately, I want you to understand the main concepts here that happen in the light reactions and the dark reactions. And ultimately, it goes back to that chemical equation for photosynthesis. So understand um, how those reactants of water and carbon dioxide go in and where that happens, what happens with the light reactions, and then ultimately what's happening in the dark reactions and you're getting a molecule of glucose and you're giving off oxygen, okay? So those are the main things that I really want you to understand from this section. Um, again, don't be overwhelmed when you go and read through all of the stuff that it talks about and you're gonna see lots of diagrams I'm going to help to um, clarify a lot of that stuff when our live lesson on Thursday. All right. So that is the end for this section. Again, um, if you have a chance, please click on the link that I'm going to provide for you to watch that little bit of the light reaction. You're going to see that it talks about some photosystems. Photosystems are made up of basically enzymes, which are proteins. And those photosystems do play a part. Um, I'm not going to test you a whole lot about that, but understand the difference between what those photosystems do um, as a general whole. Okay, so that's it for section two. I'll see you back here for section three. Take care.